Do you want to die, thief? Is that it? I must say. Don't be a stranger. Eivor! Eivor! I was eager to see you. We should go fishing. Lead the way. I must say... I used to like fishing alone, but now, whenever I do, I miss your presence. That's a bite. That'll make a wonderful meal, I think. One. You're going to make me jealous. I did not take you for a fisherman. You did not take me for a baker either. Fishing relaxes me. When the bread is kneaded and rising and I wish to be alone with my thoughts, I come here. I know the feeling. My father loved to fish. He would take a flask of ale at the start of the day and set it at the water's edge, half submerged. At the end of the day, with a dozen fish in hand, he would drink it. Cool and refreshing. I think often of that image. Done. Shall we head back? Yes, I think it's time. Even when we aren't saying a word, your company is wonderful. Thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you. Hope we do it again. Come over here, you. Eivor, I was eager to see you. How about a drinking contest? With the forewarning that I am very good at drinking. Lead the way.
Well done. Not many have beaten me. But I think in a rematch, I'll trounce you. Think whatever you like, Tarbin, my dear. The proof stands. Shall I escort you back to the Longhouse? The Longhouse? I think I'm perfectly happy here. A good day to you! Do you need... Until next time! Here you are. More relics for your collection. Show me what you found. Wonderful! And here is something for you. There should be more like this out there. Here you are. More relics for your collection. Let me see what you have. Wonderful! And here is something for you. I could use more artifacts like this. Here you are. More... Hmm. What have you brought for me? Wonderful! I want more of these artifacts! Here you are. Mo Show me what you found. Wonderful! Bring me more like this! Here you are. More. Hmm. Wonderful! This should complete my collection! A bon I'm off. Die, Dulce Fruimini!
the sail here. Up we raise our shine. Friends, they say scouts sing the best songs, but we berserkers know many tales, and much goodly lore from the old days too. Let me tell you a tale from the bright green days of Midgard's youth, so that you may judge my warrior's gift with words. Ages ago, the two tribes of gods were at war, the Essie and the Van. After years of strife, they sat down to talk of peace. In the hall where the gods swore their pieces, they shared berries, taking the sweet and spitting the rinds into a bowl. The bowl was set aside and left to ferment. From this bowl in time was born the wise man, Kvasir, who knew clever things. Kvasir traveled the nine worlds, teaching, until he was slain by greedy dwarves who wished the secrets for themselves. Seeing what was done, Odin and the gods took back Kvasir's blood, from which they brewed a delicious mead for all. This is why mead, ale, and strong drink bring us poetry and joy, but also greed and sorrow. Partake with care. Skull! Skull! Sing, my ravens. Poor Sailing here is not possible. When I was 11 winters old, I was the youngest of my favorite cousins. A wild Take and rowdy bunch of boys and girls. Together with our parents, we attended a feast at the home of Halfdan the Black of the House of Ingling. To toughen our patience, our parents set us with the old woman, who ordered us to bake flatbreads and serve it to the noble yards. After an hour, the flatbreads piled so high into pillars, you could have built a roof over it and called it a longhouse. When our work was done, an older boy, Guthrod, suggested we steal a keg of mead, drown in happiness for our good work. So Guthrod, Mikkel and Osa snuck into the storeroom and stole a barrel as I stood watch. But when we were spotted, I froze. Three of Harold's men stopped us. They struck Guthrod and Mikkel and pushed Osa to the ground. Whose idea was this? They asked. I stood and said, the idea was mine. The mead is for me. Sail. One of the men I knew said only, that is not true. Then they moved on. Is there a sea skull among you? The last ship I spent any good time on was my father's. Quite a lot happened on that ship. Quite a lot. My sea legs are returning to me, but there is a shadow yet in the waves that stifles my joy. On our voyage from Norway, Thor's temper flared. The rain was relentless, and his fury struck the mast hard and fast. The waves roiled and tossed the ship. Trygvi hollered above the wind, trying to reel in the hysteria. The father, on the other hand, I had never seen him so calm. I grabbed onto him for an order. Look, but one he of just looked at temples. me and said, If our fate is death, there is no worry. Just accept it. If our fate is to live, then there is no worry. Stay the course. I thought him mad at the time, but he was right. Those meant to survive did. There was no fighting fate. <laughs> Oh, 
Sing us a song. Dark is the shadow throne And disorder of the land Be thrown Plans tangle as they go down A stubborn monarch's head uncrowned Fiercely eyed and flaming cry Merciless men are born With fire in heart the warrior fall To redden the roads of Repton Set the mast up! Yeah. God's More sail! Set has robbed reputers No matter what I wrote you I fear that there is none to lose Award him life inside the kill His days remain Let's hear a story. When I was a girl, I tied threads to my mother's cats and screamed. The cock got right through Valhalla! Why is it when we grow old, we stop telling ourselves the most fantastic stories? Why is it we stop believing we can command the gods? We abandon all the true dramas of our own creations. Our own friendly saber. For the dark saber. The political saber. When we are children, we are the nobles of our little world. The rulers of moments, Eivor, look, the glory of glee. And if I have learned anything from all of my battles, all of my wars, my days, my regrets, my victories, I always take the time to have fun. I do not apologize for it. So save your stupidest war cry for me, Birna, lover of strangeness. <laughs> Striker, the Drop the mast! And robbed outlaw bid for a crow's crave I should not be seen in this area.
blue, who dare wear this and she? Go, soon it. And only because you all have such good taste. Now, this one. This one begins a long time ago at a desert oasis. Far away. A place of mystery, wonder, and a temple to a hidden god. The guardian of this temple was a proud man, kingly in nature, but not in fact. A protector of holy wisdom. And this protector had a wife, a scholar who spent her days reading ancient tomes and deciphering the secrets of the desert. Together they had a son, in whom they hoped to instill all their skill and knowledge. The boy was to be a union of their love. But then it came to pass that the king of that land arrived to seize the temple for himself. The protector resisted. In the battle that followed, the boy was killed and the temple was taken. Struck with grief, the protector and the scholar separated. A king who kills a child is an ergi. They should kill him back. Indeed. But for a long time, the protector and the scholar followed solitary paths, seeking for a way to revenge their son. But in their isolation, they found only anguish and pain. Alone, they could do nothing but weep and thrash at the fates. After many fruitless years, they came together again to mourn their failure. They embraced as they had in their youth. And in that joining, they realized what was missing. Only the union that had produced their son would lead to their victory. 
So the protector taught the scholar to fight and ride and seek, while the scholar taught the protector wisdom and deep knowledge. As they trained and studied, they became inseparable, moving, eating, sleeping as one. They were never seen apart. Until one day, they met upon the river's edge. They had learned all they could. Her from him, him from her. It was here they kissed and separated. She traveled east, he west. They were never seen again. It is said, however, that once every year, two eagles would return to that very spot to linger and look upon the sea. The people of the region like to see these eagles, for they are an omen, a symbol of protection. They turned into birds, like Loki became a salmon. Perhaps. Still, others say that the eagles were their children, born of a love that could never endure. But who is to say for sure? A stirring story. Fanciful, but sincere enough. Me? Fanciful? All of my stories are perfectly and mostly true. Salut. I must be on my way now. Goodbye. See you later. Grateful for your help. It's a brazen move to arrest Alfred's favored Reeve. This so called order are nothing but deviled shit peddlers. Shit peddlers who have wormed their way into every crevasse of your country. They're dangerous. I didn't catch your name, did I? Eivor of the Raven Clan. Scourge of Mercia, if that name doesn't rattle some recognition. Well, Eivor, when our three heretics smolder on a heap of ash, we'll down a cup of ale together and share our distaste of Mercians like old friends. One calls himself the Quill. Are words his weapons? There were rumors of letters nailed up around Winchester. It may be that one of these can tell us more. Alfred believes at least one is dead. Your bishop Aelfirth was the Sikhs. Bugger. Half of Winchester is in mourning for that nun groper. The gallows? What do you know of him? Must be another Reeve, I'm sure of it. Only we have the power to mete out justice, and this one would walk with cocksure righteousness. The gallows had you arrested, so he must command the law. Reeve Selwyn? Of course! That hedge pig has brought down laws like a hammer on Winchester executing sinners on spurious charges in the square. Could it be another? He's the man. He's the only one who fits. End his terror, Eivor.
Das ist das Schiff. Good people of Winchester, open your eyes. See how Alfred's lofty ideals are weighed down in this mire of human effluence. These prisoners before you do not live by Alfred's laws. They live above them. They wallow in shit, only guided by their own perversity. Hubert here, his wits addled by ale, spoke false of Bishop Aylforth, our pious servant of Winchester, who even now lies cold in his grave shroud. Aylforth was no man of God. He'll burn for his sins. Your wife is obeying shrew, Hubert. Is there a man here who has not supped rancid mead from her cup? When will your work be done, Selwyn? When all of Winchester falls to your justice? Winchester has passed judgment, Hubert. May God have mercy on your cankerous soul. There is no longer freedom in Winchester. None are safe from his blade. Perverter of justice, who dares execute the king's noose? It is not in Alfred's name that you carry out your work. You are the Order's executioner. <laughs> you peer through the veil, but you do not see clearly. Alfred's laws are a slave's fever dream. He offers shit-soaked beggars a seat at his table, where the meek devour the strong. Who best to judge the fate of the wretched many, if not the strong and worthy few? To protect your people, you must sheathe your hand in an iron glove. You grind your heels into the backs of freed men, not those who deserve it. The Order condemns all men to pain. For all men are but a shadow of the perfection we should know. The perfection of the Ancient Ones. You are only a man we one dead branch on a fast dying tree. <laughs>
see what he has found on the quilt. Those who do wrong must be punished. Jesus would preach forgiveness! Jesus did not live in the cesspool that is Winchester. Selwyn is dead. His lies poisoned everyone against us. And for what? Some only care for their own power and position. I am sorry I could not save your husband. My son is not an orphan today. You did more than enough. And the families who fell by the Order's command, were they not worthy of love? You are a Dane. How can you speak of the value of a life? All are ranked as less than the acts to you. Not true. I see honor in many people, many places. You have proved here that your compassion has a hard and brutal limit. My eyes. Hidden ones, is that who you slave for? I slave for none. 
I am scrapping England clean of its filth for the safety of my people. Ah, uh, listen. Do you hear? The excuses of a mind enslaved. <laughs> Have a look soon. You won. I can see defeat. When Scops mention me, they will sing of my conquests. Cowards do not get sagas. I am no coward. In a long lost battle for Wessex, I was the victor. The Scot could speak of that time. Focus on my lost honor. No. I'll leave your reputation as it is, here in the blood blackened mud. Rest easy, Reeve. Your time has come. Yes. Now I will be judged at the Witten of the Gods. To Helheim with you. Aye. Even Helheim needs a Reeve. <laughs> <laughs> 